الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأطهر المرسلين شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the most merciful, all praise is due to Allah. We bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is indeed his final messenger. The best of speech is the book of Allah and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Ahbaba Rasulillahi salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi yaqulu rabbuna jalla wa ala ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara wa quuduha al-nasu wa al-hijara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks and addresses the believers. O ye who believe, protect yourselves, protect your families, your children, your spouses, against the blazing fire of hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from the fire of hell, Ya Rabbul Alameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting during the month of Ramadan. And may Allah make us of those who are better after the month of Ramadan than they were before or during the month of Ramadan. Few weeks back, I was invited to give a present a presentation about Islam in a church. Alhamdulillah, the presentation went well. And after the presentation, a young, beautiful couple came to me and they said, you know, it was announced that you are a therapist. Can we please talk to you? We have a private matter. And I said, sure. So we went into a private area and we sat down and both of them immediately started crying. And they said that we have just had a loss in our family. We lost one of our babies. And subhanAllah, the saddest thing that can happen to a parent is to outlive our children. Because as parents, we believe 
that we go first and life is ahead of our children and then our children will have their children and so forth. Parents go first and then the children remain and what have you. So it's very sad when you have a parent that outlives their children. So rightly so, these people were really devastated. There were long pauses in the conversation where people would stop and then they would tell me about what has happened with their child, with their baby. And all the sorts of adjustments that they made, excited about having that baby. They would talk about how they had a big house. But once they had the baby, they moved into a smaller house. Not the other way around. They had a big house and they downsized. They moved into a smaller house because the new house was much closer to the park and they wanted the children to play as much as possible. <coughs> they changed their work schedule so that there is a parent with their babies all the time. They made sure that somehow they accommodate the house so that it is as inviting, as beautiful to these babies. And then they would speak about their loss, big loss that they have had because of the loss of the baby. They would speak about the excitement of their baby when they go to the park. When it was time to get into the car, the babies would know that this is the time to go to the park and they would just be so excited. And they would tell me all sorts of stories about what the babies did when they knew that they were going to the park. And subhanallah, all of a sudden, they were devastated. He said that, you know what, this is the greatest loss that they have experienced so far. And as they're talking to me, they also told me that they are seeing a counselor, a specialist in loss and grief. I spoke to them and alhamdulillah, I think it went well. But I have to tell you who the babies were. The babies were not real babies. It was a chihuahua dog. This is not a joke. It was a chihuahua dog. They refer to it as, this is our baby. And subhanAllah, you know, the, the point here is not whether you can have a dog halal or halal. That, that's, not, that's not the point. But sometimes people are really attached to their pets. You love a cat, you love a dog, you love whatever it is, a hamster, whatever it is. But these people said that that was a baby. And subhanallah, what is really interesting about the story is the amount of dedication that they had for the baby. People living in a big house, they said we need to get a smaller house because now we have adopted the babies, the chihuahuas. And we cannot afford to live in such a big place. We want the chihuahuas to be as close to the park as possible. We want to be good to the chihuahuas. They were telling me about how they changed their schedule so that the father can walk them in the morning time and the mother would walk them in the evening as well. These people changed their schedule so that they can be with the chihuahuas. The beds are too high for the chihuahuas to jump and be with them. They bought little stairs so that the chihuahuas can get on the bed with them. SubhanAllah, I am listening to this and I'm saying, these people are more dedicated to the chihuahuas than some of us being dedicated to our children. People sometimes are more dedicated to their pets than they are to their children. And especially, in this place that we live in. People love pets, especially cats and dogs. It is estimated that there are about 77.5 million dogs in the US. Estimated that there are about 93.7 million cats in the US. The average people in the US spend about $52 billion a year on their pets. That is $1 billion a month spent on pets. People are so crazy about their pets that somebody actually wrote a book titled One Nation Under a Dog. Not One Nation Under God, no, One Nation Under Dog. And he tells the story as to why he wrote that book. 
He said, one day, somebody gave us a chihuahua and we adopted the chihuahua, so we left the chihuahua at home. But the dog was barking all day long, that the neighbors were so bothered by it, that they called the police, so we had to take the dog to the vet. And we told the, the vet what was happening with the dog, and he said, that is normal. This is a psychological disorder that dogs have, and it is called separation anxiety. And you know what? There are Prozac, depression medications, it's called puppy Prozac. You actually give puppies. And as I am listening to this, I remember the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa narrated by Abu Dhar, collected by Al-Hakim in his Musnad, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يأتي على الناس زمان يأتي على الناس زمان لأن يربي أحدهم جوا أحب إليه من أن يربي ولده صلوا على رسول الله He said that there will be a time when for people it would be more dear to them to raise a puppy than it is to raise a child. So a time like this is going to come. But why would somebody prefer to raise a puppy than they would be to raise a child? And subhanAllah, please imagine the industry that is out there if you have a dog, a puppy or a cat. You've got a psychologist just treating disorders for pets. You've got a psychologist treating people who lost a pet. You've got the vets, you've got the grooming, you've got people who babysit pets, you've got people who walk the pets, you've got medication for the pets, you've got toys for the vets, you've got food, organic food for the pets. In some stores, they treat pets like babies, and what they do is that they put the baby food next to the cat food, next to the dog food. Because some have babies, and some have dogs, and some have cats. You look into this and you say, Subhanallah, what is, what is going on? Why is it that people prefer to raise a puppy than they would prefer to raise a child? And we're told that some people do so in order to fill the social gaps that they have in their lives. Families are very disconnected. Neighbors don't know one another. As somebody said, let me explain to you my neighborhood. Seven in the morning, the garage doors go up. Seven in the evening, the garage doors go down. And that is the end of our neighborhood. People don't know each other. Families are staying apart from one another. And as a result, there is a social gap. And people don't know how to fill that social gap. So I'm going to have a puppy to raise. And that is how I'm going to fill my social gaps. In some areas, the social gaps are so bad. They had a study in Florida where there are many senior citizens who live on their own. And one bank noticed that these senior citizens would come and they would have some really pointless transactions. Can I deposit $20 in this account and take $10 from that account? Can I have five singles, four quarters? And people are looking into these transactions and they're saying, these are very sorry transactions. These are not real transactions. And what they found out is that these senior citizens were so lonely the only person that they would talk to was the bank teller. So they would come in and they would talk to the bank teller for as long as they could because this would be the only conversation that they will have during the day. The bank got very tired of them and the bank passed a policy. You can only come and speak to the teller twice a month, otherwise we're going to make you pay. Do everything via the machine. Don't talk to people. Do it over the net, pay this and pay that. It's conveniency, but it has resulted in this big social gaps. We actually had a client came to the therapist and said, look, I am telling you my father and my mother, wallahi, they love the family dog more than they love their children. And this person is coming to their therapy because, because of this. Said so my parents pay more attention to the dog and to the pets in the family then do pay attention to me or my other siblings. Then some parents would tell you, yes, that is the case. I have never been betrayed by my dog. I have never been called names by my dog. I have never had my secrets being let out by my dog. My dog is always excited when they see me. 
Have you noticed the level of enthusiasm that the dog or the pet would meet the owner said, look, we come in and it does not matter. We don't see more changes in our pets. The pets are always enthusiastic and they're very happy to see us. But the sad part, my brothers and sisters, is that sometimes we treat our pets more and better than we treat our own children. Imagine this. They say nowadays it is so crazy that these dogs and these cats are given human names. It's no longer Skippy and Frisky and these are no longer the names. These are real human names. Where people would punish their children, go to your room, but I want the dog next to me. I want to pat on that cat. But subhanAllah, why? Why is this happening? And sometimes we are more forgiving of our pets than we are of our own children. Just listen to people. My, the dog and the cat makes the house smell so bad. Why don't you get rid of it? What do you mean get rid of it? Do you know how long we have had that cat or that dog for? And people will be very offended if you suggest this. Imagine cats love to scratch on the couches and the sofa and the beds and the walls and and people say, my cat is so naughty, it likes to do this all the time. Why don't they get rid of it? No man, I love the cat. Now imagine the kid spilling some juice over there, and subhanAllah, he will never hear the end of it. But very forgiving to the pets. To the point that somebody said, I wish I was the dog or the cat of the family. Because of how good of a treatment they receive, than they do. We actually had the sister coming in and they said, I wish that my husband would treat me the same way that he treats the cat in the family. Why brothers and sisters, why, why would we do this? Now it's beautiful that people care for the pets, mashaAllah, that is really nice. And you know, it's the sunnah if you have a pet that you actually give it a name. That if you have a pet that you actually be good to it. We are forbidden from cursing pets or cursing animals. That is all part of the sunnah, that is all beautiful. We're not faulting people for that. But why is it that our commitment is less than the people's commitment to their own pets? Have you subhanallah noticed that some of your neighbors will be up at 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, because that is the only time that they have to walk the dog? We all know this. There is always that neighbor that would, walk, that would wake up at 5 in the morning to, well, to walk the dog. Say, Akhi, why don't you come for Fajr prayers? Why is it your neighbor has more dedication and commitment to the dog than we do to God? Why is it that these people would downsize from having a big house into a smaller house so that they be good to their dogs? But we don't do this with our own families. People come in and complain and say, please, I just want it to be treated like a pet in the family. We treat our children like our pets. And we treat our pets like our children. Worse than this is when we are so kind and compassionate to the pets, but we are very abusive to our family members. Can be verbally abusive of our family members, calling them names. Names that are just absolutely unacceptable that you call your children. You're an idiot, you're an airhead, you're a bonehead, you're a cheese... And people just have got a long list of names that they have for the children. But no bad name is to be given to the pet of the family. People can be so very abusive of their spouses. Wives calling husbands all sorts of names. You loser, good for nothing, sorry that I married you. And so are the husbands very verbally abusive of their wives. Why is it that we can be very abusive physically towards our own families, but never touch the pets of the family? Can hit people, break their ribs, give them black eyes, make them ache, marks on their faces and on their bodies, but we would not dare to touch the pet of the family. To the, pe to the point that people would say, man, I wish I was the pet of the family because that pet receives better treatment than I do. That is sad, my brothers and sisters. That is sad when some people treat animals better than we treat our own selves, better than we treat human beings. That is not acceptable. That is not acceptable. To the point that somebody suggested 
that our families would actually be happier if we treat one another the same way that we treat our pets, being forgiven of them, enthusiastic when we see them, and just being affectionate when we and give them the attention and the love, said our families are going to be better. Three reminders, please, to make our families better. I like to refer to them as the triple A, and maybe you have heard this before. In order to have a happy family, three A's are required. Attention, affection, appreciation. People want attention. Subhanallah, have you noticed when your child does anything? Dad, dad, look, I can jump. Dad, dad, look, I can ride my bike. Mom, mom, look, I can do this. This, I can do that. And the point is, please give me some attention here. I like it to know that my parents actually care and the way that you translate this is by showing attention. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fatima would walk in his daughter. It does not matter who is sitting with him. It does not matter how big and important that delegation is. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam get up, kiss his daughter on the forehead in front of everybody and he would bring her and he would have her sit next to him. My daughter, you are more important than this delegation. My daughter, I care about you more than I care for this delegation. Have you seen, have you heard of children telling their dad, Dad, can you please come and sit with us? But can you please leave your blackberry behind? <laughs> dad, can you please come with us? But can you please not be on the internet? Dad, can you please put your laptop for just few minutes and spend some time with us people begging for that time that they want to spend with us. And then we want to be good parents. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كَفَى بِالْمَرْءِ إِثْمًا أَمْ يُبَيَّعَ مَنْ يَقُوتِ It suffices to label one as a sinner that when they're very negligent of their duties to those who are dependent on them. Appreciation. We want to be acknowledged. It is nice to know that somebody actually notices what you have done and they appreciate. You know what? Jazakallah khair for doing this. MashaAllah, you've been taking good care of the house. MashaAllah, this is beautiful food. MashaAllah, Jazakallah khair for working so hard to provide the family. Jazakallah khair for taking care of the kids. Jazakallah khair for doing this to us. And the point is, people say, you know, I work so hard during the day. And when I go home and my wife or my husband they utter words of appreciation to me, said it's like, you know what? No matter how difficult the day was, just that word of appreciation, it makes me feel so good, I forget all the, the tiredness and the weariness that I had during the day. People love to be appreciated. Please appreciate your children, appreciate your wives, appreciate your husbands, just point that out. And subhanAllah, we are very quick in criticizing people. We can be very critical about this not clean, about that not. SubhanAllah, imagine this. The Prophet ﷺ being a husband for over 40 years. Got married at the age of 25, died at the age of 63, about 38 years. And you know what they said about him? Ma'aba Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ta'aman qat. The Prophet, peace be upon him, never criticized food before. Especially criticizing food in the presence of the one who prepared it. You know, subhanAllah, one of my favorite stories about the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that one man bought some uh, grapes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Said that he was so excited about his grapes, that he would actually take it and put it in the mouth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Can you imagine how beautiful that is? taking the grape and putting it in his mouth. And the Prophet would eat it and the man just could not believe what he is doing so he would wait. The Prophet would chew it and then he would give him another one and the Prophet would take it. So the man gave the Prophet one and then he took one himself. And as soon as he crushed it, he could not believe how sour it was and he spit it out. And he looked at him and he said, Prophet of Allah, akulluhu kathalik, is it all like this? And the Prophet looked at him it is all like this. The man said, Prophet of Allah, why didn't you say anything? And the Prophet ﷺ said, you had such a big smile on your face, I did not want to take it away from you. Man, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. And that is, I am going to appreciate 
all the way. Third one, affection. People love to be loved. And they love to be told that they are loved. That's just how we are. I love you is music to our ears. People don't get tired of I love you. No matter how many times you say it, it's just music to our ears. Just we want to hear this. Children want to hear it. Parents want to hear it. Spouses want to hear it. And we offer this. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would just be going around just speaking so much about this idea of love. لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمن ولا تؤمن حتى تحاب. None is going to be admitted to paradise unless you all believe, and none really believes unless there is mutual love amongst yourselves. So please remember them: attention, appreciation, and affection. And that is, insha Allah, how we will have good families. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسوله المصطفى وعلى من بآثاره اقتفى. The month of October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Sometimes these ideas are really brilliant, and that is to dedicate an entire month to bring to the attention of the community of a societal ill that is taking place. And unless we collectively pay attention to it, you know what, these social ills don't just go away by themselves. This is the month when we are reminded that every 25 seconds, a woman in the U.S. is either pushed, slapped, punched, or somebody is spitting on her face. This is the time that we are reminded out of every eight Domestic violence victims is actually a senior citizen. This is the month when we are being made aware of what happens to children who grow up in an environment where domestic violence takes place. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing manly about hitting your wife. You are less of a man when you think that you can practice your power over another woman. That makes you less of a man, not more of a man. And we are told about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He never laid a hand on a woman or a child. That does not make you manly. And we in the Muslim community reject that. There is nothing Islamic about hitting somebody else. There is none, especially children. Remember that hadith: "Yati ala nasi zamanun la an yurabbi ahaduhum jurwan ahabu ilayhi min an yurabbi waladan." لا يوقر فيه كبير ولا يرحم فيه صغير. He said that there will be a time when people would prefer to raise a puppy than they do to than they prefer to raise a child. And in it, he said during that time the elders are not respected and compassion is not shown to those who are young. As a result of this, so there is nothing Islamic about doing this. We reject it. But rejecting it does not mean that it is absent from our community. We reject it, but it is also a reality in our community. It does happen, brothers and sisters. It does take place. Sometimes it takes place by people who come to the masjid. Good Muslims, brothers and sisters, because women can also be abusive of their husbands. Many times we hear, you know what? I am just going to call the police on you and say that you hit me. I want to see you in jail. But he didn't do it. I know he didn't do it, but I'm going to teach him a lesson. But he did not do it. That is fabricating a lie against your husband, against the father of your children, and you're going to do this? No, I'm going to do that. That is a form of abuse. For the man who actually goes out there to hit his wife, that is a form of abuse. Verbally, emotionally, psychologically, financially abusing our families. Brothers and sisters, there is no room for this in Islam. So we reject it. If we are that person, if we are the perpetrator of such a crime, we'll say, look, there is always help that, inshallah, that you can take. And if you are a victim, or a survivor of this crime, there is also a reminder for you that people do care. People have not forgotten you. People would love to help you if you come, inshallah, to the place where help is provided. 
And alhamdulillah, we have got a beautiful organization in our midst here that will look not only after the victim, but also after the perpetrator of that crime. And please, both of you are invited to come and benefit from the services rendered in that place. Access California, a social service agency that's got many, it's very, very resourceful. Inshallah, on your way out, make sure that you pick one of these pamphlets. You may not need it, but somebody else may, may need it. And please remember, in these difficult times, hitting people is not the answer. Being abusive of your family is not the answer. Taking your anger and frustration because there is no job, because there is the financial stress on you, please, that is not the answer. If you need help, that is when communities come together. So please, if you are any of these people, please, inshallah, stop by our office, make an appointment, and we will do our very best to help. Now, if you are a community member, and you happen to be doing well, please also let us know, I'll give you an example. A sister is stuck and she said, I cannot go anywhere because I don't have a car. For whatever reason, the husband is not available, family is not around, I just need a car. I know that some of us, you know, we upgrade our cars sometimes. And if you were to sell your car, it won't really give you that much money. But you can say, look, I can really donate this car. I can have somebody else benefit from that car. If you are that person, please inshallah do see me afterwards and subhanallah, this car can go a long way, unbelievable ways. People who can go to the doctor because they don't have a car. People who can attend school because of this. People who cannot take their children to school because of something like that. So please, inshallah, do show your help and do show your support in our community. Jazakumullah khair. Allahumma ya Rabbi, innaka afuun kareem, un tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'afu anna. Allahumma ya Rabbi, farraj hamma al-mahmoomeen, wa nafis karba al-makroobeen, wa aqdi al-dayna an al-madineen. اللهم يا رب ارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا وفك اسرانا وعاف مبتلانا واختم بالصالحات الباقيات اجالنا اللهم اجعل خير اعمالنا خواتيمها وخير ايامنا يوم نلقاك وتوفنا يا ربنا وانت راض عنا ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة